When it comes to evidence-based study tips, active recall and space repetition are the biggest hitters. But there's actually a third high impact strategy that just doesn't get its fair mention, which is sad because it can actually boost our exam scores by more than 10 to 40%. And that can be the difference between a pass and a fail, a B to an A and a 2-1 to a first. So what is this strategy? Well, let's meet the testing effect. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Shane and I'm a recently qualified doctor and neuroscience supervisor at Cambridge University. And today we're gonna to be talking about evidence-based study tips. But instead of rehashing the same active recall and space repetition mantra, I thought I'd talk about the lesser known testing effect. And in a nutshell, we should be testing ourselves way more before learning something and after learning something. We often think of testing as something you do kind of in the run up to an exam, maybe a week before. We don't really think of testing as an intuitive way of learning, but by not actually testing ourselves as part of the learning process, we're actually wasting one of the most powerful, high impact evidence-based tools. So I thought today I'll talk a little bit more about the testing effect and try and convince ourselves that actually we should be testing ourselves way more as part of our learning process. So I thought I'll split the video up into what the testing effect actually means, why and when we should be testing ourselves, the impact of feedback, and finally the practicalities of using the testing effect. As always, I'll include timestamps for all the things I'm gonna be talking about so you can jump to whatever section is most interesting to you. So what actually is the testing effect? Well, the testing effect is the concept that by taking practice tests, either before learning something or after learning something, we improve our retention of it, such that when we get a final test, maybe a week or two down the line, we perform much better than if we just restudied the same thing. So when you do the practice test before learning a material, that's known as the pre-testing effect. And when you do the practice test after learning the material, it's known as the post-testing effect. Now, this might sound a little bit like active recall, and that's the problem. Often testing and active recall gets used interchangeably but actually there are some slight differences. Mainly, you can't really carry out active retrieval without having learned something. And also active retrieval is based on the material whilst the testing effect uses material that's more tailored towards the exam, so it's much more exam focused. But anyway, we'll come to the practicalities of this a bit later. Now, let's actually see if this testing effect is legit. I know I've talked about the pre-testing effect and the post-testing effect, and I've told you the concept behind it, but is it legit? Is there actually any evidence for it? And also, when should we best test ourselves? Should we test ourselves before or after learning the material? Okay, so to answer all of those questions, there's actually been a fantastic study that was done just last year in 2019 by Alice Latimer and her colleagues. Essentially, the study looked at pre-testing, post-testing, and just restudying something and compared them to each other. So the study worked like this. It recruited 285 participants that had very little prior knowledge of about biology or the DNA. Then they were split up into three groups, the control, the pretest, and the post-test group. And they had to attend what was called a training day and the final test. Now I'll go on and explain what actually happened for each of those groups. In the control group, also known as the reading reading group, on the training day, this group had to read modules one to seven about DNA. Then when they got to the seventh module, they restarted the process again and read modules one to seven. Then the pretest group, also known as the quiz read group, essentially got a 38 question prior quiz essentially tested them on stuff to do about DNA. At the end of every question, they also got feedback to tell them if they were correct and if they weren't to tell them what the actual answer was. And when they finished this quiz, they moved on and read modules one to seven about DNA. Then the third group called the post-test, also known as the read and quiz group, went straight ahead and read from modules one to seven to do with DNA. And then they got the 38 question quiz, the same one that the pretest group did. So basically the control group just restudied the same thing twice. The pretest group got the quiz and then they read the material and the post-test group read the material, then they got the quiz. Anyway, after they'd done this, they invited all three groups back seven days later to do a final test containing 52 questions. And these were the results from the final test. The control group scored 46%, the pretest group scored 50%, and the post-test group scored the highest with 56%. So basically, doing a quiz straight after learning something resulted in a 10% increase in their performance compared to just restudying the material. But statistically, we can also run another type of analysis that allows us to figure out what an effect size is. 
that essentially looks at how large is the difference between one group and the other. And in terms of numbers, an effect size of 0.2 is quite small, 0.5 is medium, and 0.8 is quite large. So when they did this statistical analysis, comparing the pretest group with the control, they found the effect size to be around 0.35. So it's somewhere in the middle between small and medium when it comes to effect size. When they ran the same statistical analysis to compare the post-test group and the control, they found that the effect size was now 0.74. So that's edging on to being a quite a large effect size. But this was just one experiment and in science, we can't really conclude something very solidly based on just one experiment. But there have also been meta-analyses, which essentially looks at loads of different studies, combines that data and then analyzes them. So this is essentially the highest level of scientific evidence that we can see. And when they ran these meta-analytical studies, they also found the same thing, that the post-testing effect was the strongest and the pre-testing effect still was there, but not as big, but is still better than restudying something. There's actually another important element to this and that's to do with feedback. And what I mean by that is that we should be marking our tests or quizzes and things that we do, see if we got it wrong or we got it right and basically figuring out what the right answer is. And this again is backed with evidence. So in an example study, they essentially got a group of people to read something and one group essentially had no kind of practice tests and they did the final test later down the line. One group had a practice test but they got no feedback on if the answer was correct or not. The other group got a practice test and they got feedback at every single question. So, you know, you answer one question and they got feedback immediately after. And then the final group had a practice test and had feedback, which was delayed feedback. And they only found out if they answered correctly or incorrectly at the end of answering all of the questions. They found that the group with no practice scored about 11% in the final test. They found that the group that did practice tests but got no feedback scored 33%. Then the group that had practice tests and got immediate feedback scored 43%. And the group that got practice tests and delayed feedback scored the highest with 54%. So the research shows that even without feedback, just testing yourself can actually improve your final overall score. But it also shows that delayed feedback, so getting the feedback for all the questions you answer right at the end of the practice test after you've completed everything, gets you the highest marks. So what this means for us is that we should be doing tests and also marking them at the very end and giving ourselves feedback to see if it was correct and what the correct answer actually was. Okay, so what actually is the practicalities of all this information? When should you be testing yourself? And importantly, how should you be testing yourself? And what I mean by that is, what material are you gonna be using to test yourself? Now, there are two things you can do. One is quite similar to something called the Cornell note-taking system. What happens there is that you read a lecture note or a lecture material or whatever, and then you write on another piece of paper a list of questions to do with that material. And then later you look at those questions and see if you can answer them. Now that's one way of doing this whole testing yourself thing. But personally, I don't really like that system. One, it wastes a lot of your own time creating these questions based on stuff that you're reading. And two, you don't really have any exam expertise yourself. You know, you don't really know how the exams ask questions. So you might be writing down really vague questions or be focusing on things that the exam actually never focuses on. So for me, the time cost and the lack of exam focus means that I don't use that system. What I do instead is go onto the university website and then find an exam paper to do with the topic that I'm about to learn. Then I'll skim a few questions, about three to five, just to get a feel of what the questions are like, what they like to ask and how they ask them. Then I'll move on and read my lecture material. And after I've read and learnt my lecture material using Active Recall and all of that business, then I'll move on and do the practice test. So essentially whatever the questions I looked at, I'll do a different set and see if I can answer them. At the end of doing that, I will essentially find a mark scheme if I can, or I'll go back to the lecture material and mark the questions that I've done. I found that this process, both pre-testing to an extent and post-testing, and providing myself, importantly, feedback, massively helped improve my exam scores. Not only that, it massively relieved a lot of anxiety. I always found that if I hadn't tested myself, I kind of come on to a few weeks running up to the exam, feeling really anxious, not too sure if I'm exam ready, if I've learned the material correctly, and if I'm gonna be able to answer the actual exam questions. So by exposing myself super early to the style of exam questions that I'm actually gonna be tested on, kind of doing that way before even learning something and actually consolidating it by doing it straight after learning something, felt it improved just my whole exam technique. So yeah, practically I recommend just before you sit down to learn something, go onto your university website, type in whatever topic you want to learn, find a past exam paper, questions and stuff that are on it, 
just skim over three or five of them to get a feel for things, then sit down and learn the material, use Active Recall and all of that stuff. Then at the end, do the actual exam paper or whatever the question that's relevant to that topic and then mock it importantly to give yourself some feedback to know if you're getting the questions correct. If not, why not? And then see what the correct answers are. Try this out, see if it works for you. And if you're looking for more evidence-based tips that can help your study, then definitely check out this video where I talk about the mistakes that I was making and the changes that I made to correct them to help improve my overall exam score. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and smash that subscribe button. But that's it for me for today and I'll see you guys next time.